On August 31st, 1961, the Boer family was enjoying a family night at their residence in Tacoma, Washington. This area is fairly urban and there is not much forest or vegetation around except on the north side of the Boer's residence which there is a creek that continues close to the city. At 11 pm, the family said goodnight to each other and went to sleep. Eight years old Anne Marie and her three years old sister were sleeping upstairs. Another sister and brother, both under age 10, were sleeping downstairs in the basement, and Mr. and Mrs. Boer were sleeping on the ground floor. As the family was going to sleep, a heavy rain and wind started in the area. Sometime during the night, Anne Marie brought her three years old sister to her parents' room because she was crying during the night. Her sister had recently broken her arm and was still in pain. After that, the parents again went to sleep very fast. For some reason, at 5.30 pm, Ms. Mrs. Boer became restless and got up early. She admitted this was an unusual time for her to get up. She went into the living room and saw the front window open and the lock on the front door was undone. Mrs. Boer searched the house and couldn't find the 8 years old Anne Marie. She let Mr. Boer know of the situation and they searched the residence and yard without finding the girl. At this point, the police was called and a search was started. The police found that a small bench was leaning against the outside wall of the house below the window. They also found footprints but they couldn't be sure the size of it because of the heavy rain. The family had a cocker spaniel dog that at the night of the disappearance was sleeping at the hallway between kitchen and basement. He never barked or alerted the residents. The police later stated they believed that someone might have taken the girl who knew the family and that's why the dog never made a sound. Hundred soldiers, helicopters and bloodhound dogs were involved with the search. Even FBI showed up but never officially entered the case because in their mind there wasn't an abduction. However, the Washington law enforcement classified the case as abduction later on. All the search effort amounted to nothing, and Marie Boer was never found. Twenty-two years old Lemar Pepmuller and his wife lived in Kellogg, Idaho. Their residence was 8 miles from Wallace and 18 miles south of Wallace, he found a location to hunt. Lemar really enjoyed the outdoors, especially deer hunting. On November 21st, 1953, Lemar left his residence by himself for a day hunting at Slate Creek area south of Wallace. Lemar didn't return at the end of the day and by the next day his wife called the authorities and a search was started. As the searchers was starting their effort, a heavy snow started in the area and it didn't stop until 20 inches of snow was on the ground. For the first few days, they didn't find a single trace of Lamar. But three days after Lamar went missing, they found his vehicle. Now, the searchers were looking around the vehicle for any trace of the missing hunter. Beside his vehicle, they found half a deer carcass. On the same day, they found the dead body of Lemar getting buried in the snow one mile from the vehicle. Lemar had a backboard to carry a deer on his back, but there was no deer on it. They didn't find the other half of the deer carcass nor Lemar's rifle. Coroner H. O. Mowry claimed Lemar probably got exhausted from hunting, collapsed and died. But we need to remember, Lemar wasn't hunting at that time. He knew where his car was at and he already delivered half of the carcass of the deer he had hunted and he was going back to bring another one. Something strange happened when he was delivering back the other half of the carcass. Later on, the coroner met the body at the funeral home and stated he died of a heart attack on the spot. There was no autopsy. 
How Lamar died in the forest of Wallace, Idaho remains a mystery to this day. On May 27, 1951, the Schadinger family went for a summer vacation at Truckee, California. This city is known for its snow skiing and on summer, people enjoy fishing the surrounding creeks. They had an 8 years old son named Roger who was with the family during the vacation. At around noon of May 27th, father and son were fishing the easily accessible Adler Creek just on the northwestern edge of Truckee. This area sits on the edge of a vast wilderness area and close to the creek there were large pine trees. After some time of fishing, Mr. Schadinger realized he hadn't seen his son for a while now. So he started shouting his name and searching for him. The creek they were fishing at is very small but long which eventually reaches Truckee City. Mr. Schadinger realized he couldn't find his son and he called the sheriff for assistance. Hundreds of community volunteers, police officers, deputies looked for the boy and they were positive Roger wasn't in the area the Schadingers were fishing. The county sheriff brought a special Indian tracker to the scene to help with the search. His name was Archie Hicks. Archie found the tracks of the young boy very soon. He found the tracks in an area where search criteria believed Roger wouldn't be. It was higher in elevation and 5 miles from the area he was last seen. Archie found Roger alive and in a bush at an elevation of 7,600 feet. It was 1,000 feet higher in elevation than the creek the family was fishing at. He was found barefooted. Archie asked the boy what happened during his disappearance and he said he had been hiding from the people. Some articles say he must have meant the searchers but a lost boy want to be found and saved naturally. It didn't make sense he was hiding. It's worth mentioning, 15 years later, 2 years old James Boren Kircher also went missing and was never found close to this area. 20 years later, another person went missing 9 miles from this area with the name of Dana Cooper at 13 years of age. Why did Roger take off his shoes? and why he was going uphill instead of downhill. He knew he wasn't going to reach his family by going uphill. He knew the creek and safety was downhill. We will never know what really happened during Roger's disappearance.